Hey, welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video we're going to be having a look at installing Home Assistant on the Raspberry Pi. So this is one of my more basic videos and my plan is to get a few of these basic videos out and try and get people that are new to Home Assistant, get them up to scratch with knowing how to do various things in Home Assistant. And then once we've got those people going and we've got a few of these basics out of the way, we can start branching off then and covering other aspects of Home Assistant and covering some of the requests that I've had. So before we get started, can I again just say a massive thank you to the Home Assistant community just for all the support and feedback I've been getting. Before I got that 100 subscribers video out, we'd hit 200 subscribers. And then this morning when I woke up, we were on over 300. So we hit 300 subscribers in 24 hours, which is crazy. I've said the word subscribers too many times now. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, I've listened to the feedback. Um, I've tried to make some of the improvements um, just with the whole flow um, and the structuring of the, the content. Um, so hopefully that will come across and you'll see that. I have bought some additional things to help with the videos that should be coming later on in the week so hopefully the actual production quality uh, will get better as well as the, the whole lighting but yeah I've heard what you said and I will try and make those improvements also thank you to all the people that have given me suggestions um, comments for feedback for content that we should create uh, I've sort of been stacking up a big list and I'll be going through it um, anything that I can't do or have never done before I'm willing to give it a go and yeah, hopefully with the help of you guys as well, we can make something awesome. So without further ado, let's get started on this installation. So there's going to be a few things you need for the Raspberry Pi installation. You're obviously going to need a Raspberry Pi. You're going to need an SD card. You're going to need an Ethernet cable. If you haven't got an Ethernet cable, you can do it with Wi-Fi, but it's definitely, definitely recommended to use an Ethernet cable and have it hardwired. You're also going to need an SD card reader and a power supply for the Pi. So those are all of the physical things you need, and if you've got all of those bundled up, then we can get started. Now, in addition to that hardware, there's a couple of bits of software you're going to need. You're going to need the Raspberry Pi image, dependent on the Pi you've got. So uh, if you've got the 2 gig, you can only use the 32-bit image. If you've got the 4 gig or the 8 gig, you can use the 64-bit image. Um, you can also use the 32-bit on a 4 gig, but it's sort of down to what you plan on doing with the Pi, really. For this installation, I'm going to be running the 64-bit image. Now, if you've only got hardware that will only run the 32-bit image, then don't worry, you can still follow along. The installation process for both the 32 and the 64-bit are both exactly the same. Now, usually as a beginner, it is usually the 32-bit image that's used. Um, I'm literally going with the 64-bit just because I've got this new 8-gig uh, Raspberry Pi and there's a couple of 64-bit integrations I want to try out. So there's a bit of a win-win there because I get to create the video and I also get to set up a Pi image that I want to use. So the reason that the 32-bit version is usually used by beginners is because that was the one that Home Assistant would always recommend. Um, but since the last big update uh, that was announced in the, the Home Assistant conference, they have now started saying that 64-bit is the one to use. And there are some pros and cons of using 32 or using 64 Mainly, um, there's diff a couple of different libraries and a few integrations work on 32 and they don't work on 64 and vice versa. And there did used to be a big thing with the 64-bit version where you couldn't access and use the GPI opens, but I'm not sure if that is still a thing. Um, if you do know, let me know in the comments. We're then going to need to grab Etcher, which is a free bit of software, and that's going to allow us to write the Home Assistant image to the SD card. And then the final thing we need to do, if you're not already, is hit that subscribe button below. Now, I'll have links for the needed software below. I'll also put a couple of links in for the bits of hardware I'm using if you want to grab the same. So let's start the actual installation then. So following those links, we should have our Raspberry Pi image for our chosen Pi. And we should have the Etcher installer. So now we want to go ahead and just run that Etcher installer. And OK. And that will start installing. Okay, and once that's done, you'll be presented with the Etcher screen like this. We're then going to want to take our SD card reader and our SD card. Um, for this, I'm using the, the recommended A2 class SD card. 
and the reason that's recommended is just that the A2 card um, has faster read and write speeds. Don't worry if you haven't got an A2 card, you can use other SD cards. Again, it's just a recommendation for the speeds. We then want to just pop in our SD card. We're then going to choose flash from file. Navigate to where we've got our Home Assistant image and select that. And OK that. And then we're going to choose the target and we're going to choose that um, SD card that we just entered into the machine. So we're going to choose our SD card and then hit select and then hit flash. That will just take a second then to flash the image to the SD card and what that will do is that will put the whole home installation image onto the card ready for you to use. And this will be the sort of main installation part here. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So that will carry on doing its thing, just be flashing. Uh, depending on the speed of the machine you're using and obviously the type of USB and the type of SD card that will determine how long it takes. But it should just be a couple of minutes. So while we're waiting on that, if you haven't already, check out my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter page. Um, give me a follow and a like on those pages. Um, I've been sharing information about these videos before I put them up. So that will be a good place for you to find out when there's a new one coming out. And then after the flash, the final step it's going to do then is the validating. Again, this will just be a couple of minutes. Okay, and now that that's done, we can just close out of Etcher and eject the USB. Now, one thing I have forgot to mention is that obviously we're doing this on a Windows machine, but all the steps that we've done so far are the exact same if you're doing it with a Mac. And with all of that done, we're going to take our SD card, insert it into the Pi, plug the Pi in with Ethernet, and then power it on. So you should see the Pi spring to life and you'll see the LED start flashing. And what it's going to do now is it's going to start, it's going to boot that um, image that we've just installed on it and it's going to start trying to pull down the latest version of Home Assistant and install that for you. Once you've got that all plugged in and going, you can open up a new web browser and you can head to homeassistant.local colon 8123. And this colon 8123 is just the default port number that Home Assistant runs on. You'll then be presented with the following and just have to wait a few minutes. Again, once that's finished, the page should refresh itself and you'll be presented with the page here to create your user account and to sign in. You might notice that my URL, I'm using the actual IP address to get to the Pi. Um, and I've done that rather than using the homeassistant.local because I'm currently running Home Assistant on my network. So if I visit that URL, it will just take me straight to my current Home Assistant instance. Once we've gone through the account creation here, I'll just show you how you can find the IP address of your um, Pi. Okay, so we can go ahead now and create an account. So at this point as well, if you were returning from a previous Home Assistant installation and you had a snapshot, which is like a, a little backup, um, I'll go through this in more detail in another video, but if you had this backup, you could also um, restore that at this point here, which would then take you back to a previous version that you were running. Okay, so we want to go ahead and create an account now. Once that's done, Home Assistant's then going to ask you to name the installation. This is handy if you've got multiple instances of Home Assistant installed on your network. So you can just grab it by name. It's going to ask for your location and it's going to use this location just for setting things like your sun based automations. So it's going to know when sunrise and sunset is based on wherever you pick in the world. You can then set your time zone and your preferred um, unit system. So next up, you can manually start trying to add any devices that Home Assistant's aware of. So if you hit more here, you can then search for a type of integration. So say an Apple TV, if you own an Apple TV, um, you could add that and follow the steps for getting that added. Um, you can also just leave it and come back to it at a later time. That's fine. Um, and if you hit finish without doing any of those, Home Assistant will then in the background have a look for devices and services on the network and it will automatically try and pull those in if it knows how to interact with them. So we're going to hit finish there. And there we go. We're at our first Home Assistant dashboard. So I mentioned before I'd quickly show you how to get the IP address of your Pi. So you can head over here and hit Supervisor. You can then hit System, and your Pi's IP address will be right here.
and that's pretty much the basics for getting um, Home Assistant installed on a Raspberry Pi. So we'll leave that there for now, um, and then in a future video we'll revisit this and I'll show you how to start adding your devices in and setting up integrations. I'll also give you a bit of a tour around Home Assistant so you can find out where things are in the menu. Now a couple of things I brushed over is I didn't cover the Wi-Fi setup and the reason for this is that I personally think if you're using Home Assistant it should be wired in so that you've got less sort of delay there on the network and if you're using Home Assistant with Wi-Fi you're adding that in. Um, to get Wi-Fi working there is an extra step and you will need a, an external USB just to plug into the Pi. Um, what I might do is just cover that either in a blog post or just a little separate video just how to do that. It's very quick and simple. Um, I'll add a link as well just, just in case someone's interested in doing that but I don't recommend that. And the other thing is you might get a few pop-ups here down in the notification section here and what that will be will be Home Assistant discovering devices on your network and if you see that um, it will basically say it's found this thing and it will ask you if you want to set it up. So don't be scared of that if that if you see lots of little orange pop-ups there. I've also brushed over setting static IPs and that's just because everyone's home networks are different, everyone's got different routers so there's a ton of different uh, ways to set a static IP um, but what that would do is it would just assign an IP address to your Pi and it would always have that IP. That's handy then if you're feeding your Pi's IP into other services um, but for now you can just use that homeassistant.local if you do want help with setting a static IP just leave me a comment below and I'll help you get that set up and I'll just sort of do that on a case by case basis and there we go guys you have your first home assistant set up up and running ready to start controlling everything in your house so I think my next video is going to be setting up home assistant to boot from an SSD and I'm also going to put together a really quick version of this video just in like a really small time frame just for people that want to see it really quick just quick steps by steps without any of this yardy yardy description that I'm uh, putting out and then after that I'll move on to navigating around Home Assistant setting up your first automations getting your devices and things you already own connected into Home Assistant and just generally showing off Home Assistant things I will return to installations at some point and I'll go over the installation on an Odroid, Intel NUC, a VM, just other types of installations, um, but I think those are a bit more advanced. So we're going to keep it basic, get everyone on the same level and then go from there. So my question's for you guys, how did you find that installation and how was it to follow? Again, big thank you to the Home Assistant community just for all the support I've been getting. Um, I am trying to get better and improve this content. Let me know what you think. I'll listen to any feedback and just constantly try and improve. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you're not already, then please hit that subscribe button. So thank you and see you in the next one.